Fillmore County, and also known as Mr. Saltwater Tank. And I'm here at my buddy's Rick's house today to show you a pretty common complaint that people have in the saltwater aquarium world, and I'm going to show you how we solved it. So Rick just made the switch from being a tank dabbler to a reef enthusiast, which means that he's just now getting into corals from being an fish-only tank owner. And he's seen a couple issues with his tank, and he wants to have his corals really shine, so that's what I'm here to talk to you about. So Rick, thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Tell me about your tank. I have a 72-gallon bow front with 216 watts of T5 lighting, and I have a sun. I set up my tank about four years ago as fish only, okay. and then I, made the, I started adding some corals. I'm starting to develop some problems because my tank setup isn't sophisticated enough, I think. I had some long, some hair algae uh, that seems to be clearing up due to the new skimmer that you advised me to buy. Yeah. But now I'm having uh, cyano outbreaks that are the red-purple stuff okay. that's on the back, and it's, it's covering most of the rocks, and it, and, uh, it gets on my corals as well. And you said, you, I know we were talking earlier, and you, know, you were talking about how you went to other people's uh, houses and saw their tanks. I go into these people's houses, and I see these gorgeous aquariums. You know, there, there's absolutely no algae. <laughs> Everything looks like it was designed by someone who really knew what they were doing. Uh -huh. You know, the tanks are just gorgeous. And then I come home, and I look at mine, and I go, geez, it looked like I just dumped it out of a bucket, you know. And, uh, and so I really need some help making mine look like that. You know, a lot of people have that complaint. They get a tank, they want to go into corals, they feel like they need all this extra stuff. And in reality, it's just a couple little minor tweaks that we can make to have your zoa start coming out again and, you know, having that tank that you started out wanting. So what Rick is dealing with is really common with the saltwater aquarium keepers. You go to your buddy's house and their tank looks great. And you come home and look at yours and you're like, wait a minute, it's not the same thing. What do I do? You go online, you read a whole bunch of information, but who do you trust? Because everyone's got a different opinion. Now, I can completely relate. I mean, when you come home and your tank doesn't look absolutely perfect, it sucks. I'm not going to lie. But I think with a couple minor tweaks, Rick can really have this tank really looking well, so it really start enjoying it again. The one thing I'm going to recommend to Rick that's going to really make a difference is adding a phosphate reactor to his tank. Now, this is a standard issue phosphate reactor that I really like. It's made by a company called Via Aqua. You can get it at Marine Depot or any online retailer. It comes with a pump, you pull your water in, push it down into the reactor, I'm going to push it up through the media, and then it's going to kick it back out again, dump it back into your tank. This whole setup here would cost you $40, $45 brand new. Now, let's talk for a minute about what kind of media I'm going to recommend that Rick put in this reactor. I'm going to start them off with something called phosphate sponge. That's super absorbent media. It's going to suck down those phosphates real quick and help him get it out of his water. Now, the thing about phosphate sponge you've got to be really careful about is after 48 hours, everything that it's absorbed, it's going to release back into the tank. So it's a little higher maintenance. You've got to pull it out about every 36 hours to get some fresh media in there. But it works really well because it's super absorbent. Then I'm going to switch into something called GFO, which is granulated ferric oxide which is just a fancy term for phosphate media. This stuff is something that you can leave in here for a month, up to maybe two months at a time. It'll suck up the phosphates in the water, and it won't release them back into his water, so it's really less maintenance, and less worry, less headaches. So let's talk about granulated ferric oxide, or GFO for short, and this is what we're gonna put in Rick's reactor to suck down the phosphates in his tank. Now here's uh, the GFO that I run. This is from Bulk Resupply. This is about um, a pound's worth. And for Rick's tank, I'm gonna use about a cup of GFO in his reactor. And each cup I'll probably leave in there for a good month. Some people say you can leave it for two months. I don't like leaving it there that long because GFO is so cheap. When it's exhausted, you're not really gonna know unless you're doing phosphate tests all the time, which no one wants to do that. So every month, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it out, throw it away, reload some new GFO. So let me pour out some GFO and point out an important thing to keep in mind with this stuff. So as you can see, this stuff looks like cat food almost, like dried cat food. It's got some old granules. And we're going to put this right into Rick's reactor. And then we're going to push some water through the reactor. And the first little bit of water that's going to come through the reactor, we're actually going to discard that water. So we're going to put the output pipe inside into a bucket. Um, that way, all the dust that's in here, um, it's going to get pushed down to the tank because we don't want it running around our tank. So we're going to leave the GFO in Rick's tank for about a month and then come back and check on him and see how his tank is doing and see if he's any happier with the improvements that I know are going to come for his tank. But for now, I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV.